my longest living patient is now 102 years old. Wow. And I have people in their hundreds, 98, 99 and that. None of them have given up sugar. I read this quote that sometimes you need to close one door for another one to open. So I just woke up one morning and took the plunge. Revisit the quality of your friend circle. So this important. is so important. Who you hang with, who you follow on social media, who you listen to. Okay, because you are becoming a product of that. There's no magic in manifestation. It's really there there are three simple rules. Ubiquitous with fitness and health. People know very little of the journey Luke Cotino made from being a DJ in Goa to now being a well-known integrative lifestyle expert. Sitting down to chat with him was a masterclass on wellness as he shared insights on everything: physical fitness, mental health, holistic health, and even manifestation. This episode is power packed with knowledge and I can't wait for you to see it. Welcome to Humans of Bombay Luke. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, it's been a while. I think that we've had a back and forth of dates and finally it worked out. So I'm happy it's worked out. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to be chatting because I have a lot of questions about nutrition, about well-being in general. So, mm-hmm. uh I feel like I've slipped those in into the <laughs> vast amount of questions we have. But it's such an interesting journey that you've had. You were a DJ in Goa and then you worked in corporate and then you've found yourself here you know where uh, your name is associated with lifestyle wellness um and uh, well-being in general right like a holistic well-being approach how did you get interested in this space so the dj part was just part of my college life okay. i got thrown into the scene of rave parties and i was told to play one night and it ended up being a couple of nights and a couple of weekends and 3 years of college yeah. but after that when i moved to mumbai i didn't dj again after that so i kept studying i always kept studying nutrition i studied pediatrics i just kept doing courses that i would find i was very interested in anatomy right but i didn't know what i wanted after i got out of college so i joined the corporate world i came to mumbai to work at mcdonald's first wow. so i did 6 months of an internship it was a management trainee course i got picked up from my hotel management college in goa mm. and mumbai was the first assignment so 6 months was you know making burgers cleaning the toilets all of that yeah. it was an amazing experience and i still didn't know what i wanted to do mm. and then i got into the corporate world because that definitely paid me more than the stipend that mcdonald's was paying at that of point of course yeah <laughs> and i just flowed i just flowed for a while but i kept studying So I was in Mumbai, then I was in Qatar, I was in Dubai, I was in London, and then I finally came back and I joined IBM over here in the corporate space. And uh I kept studying right through. And then I think at about uh 30 at about 31, that's when I realized I want to make a change because I was in the elevator one day and uh I heard this very very high position gentleman talking about the fact that you know he was like at a very high position in the company saying that what's the point of you know so much of money and position i can't even fit comfortably into a first class seat wow and i started yeah. thinking and realizing that the problems at the management level were so many related to sickness and lifestyle hmm. and something shifted in me i was like what's the point of growing the corporate ladder having money and you know not being able to enjoy life hmm. and that's when i said i want to identify this gap i still didn't know what i wanted to do and i said maybe nutrition can fix it because i've studied nutrition and then i realized it was lifestyle that lifestyle was the gap how was it uh, to take the plunge to move from corporate i didn't i shared this with one of my managers and ibm had a beautiful policy of allowing you to do whatever else you wanted to do if it doesn't conflict with your core job right. so i could continue studying i was put into integrated health services which hmm. ibm had and i worked on a lot of mumbai projects to look after the health of you know that business unit so it kind of started working and i was always thinking now you know i'm getting more into patients i have 15 patients and i was like when i have 20 patients i did the calculation i would roughly be earning what i was earning in ibm at that point which was about 80000 right. so i said that's when i'll feel like okay now i can take the plunge yeah. because my 20 or 30 or 40 patients would give me about that much of money so there won't be like any compromise in terms of your own lifestyle because yeah. it's kind of working yeah, absolutely yeah. it was paying the rent it yeah. was paying everything yeah. else and yeah. then one fine night i was like i just felt i should make the change and mm. you know i read this quote that sometimes you need to close one door for another one to open so i just woke up one morning and took the plunge i resigned and i think that was the best decision of my life not that i didn't have a great 10 years at ibm mm. but leaving that really opened several doors and from 20 patients i jumped up to about 100 in less than a week what it was like life was just waiting for you to like you know leave, leave. that so you can give your full focus so how did have. it happen yeah. how did you go from 20 to 100 
So I think what happened was mine was word of mouth. Oh, At that point, yeah. I would you know meet people in coffee shops and patients in coffee shops and stuff like that mm. and i think word of mouth i mean touch what i was good at what i was doing back yeah, then clearly, and yeah. all of a sudden families started joining and then more families started joining then i was put on flights to meet other families around the country and uh, it it was interesting yeah and uh, you know it's so interesting that you you say that it's word of mouth because sometimes that's just such a powerful way of yeah. uh, marketing you don't really need to spend it's just that you're good at what you do and people appreciate yeah. that so what do you think people appreciated about you um as opposed to there were many people kind of you know recommending diets and nutrition mm-hmm. etc what is it that you think is your speciality or usp that kind of attracted these people into your journey oh that's that's a great question so when i joined there were already pioneers in the industry that i still look up to and respect because yeah. i learned a lot from them when i started off the intention was never to you know become like someone mm. or compare myself to another nutritionist or a wellness expert who was doing something it was never my intention my intention was genuinely i wanted to help the person in front of me so i think that focus and intention of just give your best to the person in front of you was one two simplicity mm. i think i kept my protocol very simple for me till date the one thing that hasn't changed in my line of treatment is if you don't have the fundamentals right complication is unnecessary. Yeah. So when people come and say hey Luke I'm flying to Sloans to get a second opinion for cancer or I want to do this new diet hmm. I'm like do whatever you want but first let's talk about the fundamentals. You know, are you sleeping right? Are you eating natural? Are you as your exercise suiting the, your body type and are you emotionally okay? If those fundamentals are not in place the next complicated step is never going to help you. So I think I really had the ability and the gift to bond with people and understand at a deep You know, I used to search for root causes. Hmm. So people were always like, "Why are you asking me so many questions?" So I was like, "Listen, I'm I'm here not to treat your symptom. Your doctor's treating your symptom. I'm here to find out why you keep getting a headache, why you keep putting on weight when you lose it, why you keep getting endometriosis." And I think that whole focus on finding the root cause, I think that was the USP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um so I'm going to now come into the technicalities because uh uh we've come up with so many questions that people have mm-hmm. and you could add so much value to mm-hmm. so you have to explain these things to me like i'm a 5 year old i want to understand it at the very basic the very core um weight management is such a huge uh, issue whether mm-hmm. you're trying to move up the scale or down the scale um just being holistically fit right is an extremely complicated process to a lot mm-hmm. of people can you explain it to me like what what is it at the very base that mm-hmm. that one can do to achieve that fitness so actually we need to turn it on its head when you're holistically fit or you're living holistically all these things become very easy hmm. your body automatically starts burning fat and i'll explain how that works yeah. so number one is a lot of my answers today will be based on people changing their perception like a mindset change move from weight loss to fat loss hmm. weight loss is the easiest People are doing it all the time on fad diets, but they're doing it the wrong way. They're losing water weight, they're losing muscle mass, and they're losing bone density. Hmm. And that's why then their metabolism falls down and after a while they put on all the weight again. So when you look at fat loss, the word is fat loss. You're looking at burning fat. You're not looking at losing weight. Okay. You're looking at burning fat. So when you look at a holistic level, like what what does the body do to put on fat in the first place? Hmm. So number 1, the simplest, like for a 5-year-old, example, If I'm eating more than I require, hmm. if my body's not using that energy, it's stored as fat. Yeah. So I have a five liter tank; it can only store five liters of water. If I put the six liter of water, it's going to overflow and it's going to collect around the tank. Yeah. It's the same thing with food. It's the same thing with protein. So you overdo it on protein, but your body has no requirement; stored as fat. Hmm. You overdo it on fat, carbohydrates. Body is not using it to break it down into energy. that extra energy is stored in the body as fat. Right. So the first principle is I'm eating more than required. Now I'm, a lot of people will say but look I'm eating less. I'm starving myself. Mm. I don't eat a meal. I skip a meal. That's also bad because now the body moves into stress mode. And it re- it tries to figure out why is this person eating less? Mm. Oh no, maybe there's a shortage of food because the mind doesn't know what's happening. Your conscious mind knows. Yeah. Your subconscious mind responds to cellular metabolism. It's not getting energy, so it'll start conserving it. The next meal it'll actually store it. Mm. it won't use it as energy because the body only cares about survival i'll say that the next day i may not have even this it doesn't much know. yeah it doesn't your know. conscious mind may think i'm going to eat in 3 hours yeah. but your subconscious mind doesn't know and every cell in the body is primed for one thing survival survival 
Right. Just yeah. survival. 100%. So again, now fat loss is a lot of people will say, I'm going to burn the fat of my body. So if I eat a samosa, which is 400 calories, and I run 400 calories on the treadmill, doesn't make a difference hmm. at all. Doesn't make a difference because that's not the kind of caloric value that you're looking at creating or burning in your body. That 400 could be burnt the same day with your regular walking and all of that stuff. Hmm. If you do the samosa the second time or the third time, or I've had a samosa and a pair with a high carb meal, the expenditure is less than the consumption. Absolutely. Yeah. So now the excess blood sugar will get converted into triglycerides or fat. Hmm. So the simple thing is when it comes to fat loss, holistically, what am I doing? So forget about the diet plan. That, that's the last thing. How am I eating? What's my lifestyle when it comes to food? What's the quality of my food? Hmm. If I'm getting 95% of my nutrients from na natural foods that my body has enzymes to break down, but my body doesn't have all the enzymes to break down ultra-processed food and processed, which is why it's generally bad for us. Exactly, yeah. So you see we're bringing unnatural into a natural body and the struggle is more. Hmm. So the harmony is broken in the human body. Okay, so let's go deeper. Uh, explain to me what would be the most natural forms of food that we can consume. We understand processed, uh, yeah. not processed, that, that distinction. But mm -hmm. what is recommended in terms of, okay, so... Uh, a favorite of a lot of Indians, actually world over is potatoes. Yeah. Let's 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 talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. And my second sub question to this question is: Is there a formula that you can apply just bases your body weight on how much you should be consuming? And mm -hmm. if yes, then we can disclose it and people can can apply right. it. So potatoes is one example. Yeah. Okay. You move into your Euro European regions hmm. where they have potato with their beef, potato yeah. with their steaks. It's common. They're way fitter than most people in the world. And this is every day. Yeah, this is every day. Yeah. Okay, because it's not the potato that's the problem. It's the way it's cooked. It's the quantity and it's the person eating it. So someone who's sedentary and having a high starch diet with potato, obviously the potato is going to cause problems. Hmm. If I'm deep frying a potato, I'm going to make it wor way worse. But the problem is the deep frying, not the potato. Right. I know athletes, we have cricket players, we have... Pro athlete, football players, gymnasts, they have potatoes at every meal. And they're slim, they're ripped, they're jacked and all of that stuff because they're burning that kind of energy, hmm. cooking it the right way. Now, if I'm having rice and potato and rotis and puris and all of the sugar after that, that's a high carb meal. Yeah. Obviously, that's the problem, but the potato isn't the problem. Hmm. I have diabetics who eat potatoes and they're no longer diabetic today because it's paired with protein. It's paired with good fats and their overall calorific value in the end, at the end of the day is lower. Right. Understood. Okay. So what are, what are good carbs? So your good carbs are everything that nature gives you. Like your good carbs are your whole grains, mm. your fibrous vegetables, anything that's refined is your bad carb. Okay. Anything that's, so your white flours, anything that's refined, yeah. anything that's unnatural is a bad carb, including mm. fats. Mm. You have great fats like your pure coconut oils, your pure ghee, your pure olive oils, which are not processed which are not refined, but mm. they're cold pressed. They're way different from a, a, a hydrogenated pure ghee, mm. a hydrogenated oil, refined oils. The oil is the same, but the way of processing it makes it dangerous yeah. for people. Yeah. So it comes down to nature. These are all the carbs that you can eat. Today, a lot of people are like, hey, I'm on a low carb diet, but I still don't get results. Mm. Maybe you don't need to be on a low carb diet. Maybe the problem is your exercise. Maybe you're sleep deprived. Maybe you're emotionally, chronically stressed. And all of that is also contributing to your weight. So how do you integrate these um, principles to become a natural part of your lifestyle uh, is, is a question that, that has come up. So you got to make them into small wins. Okay. Lifestyle changes. Yeah. You know, everyone does, I'm going off sugar for a month. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you felt great. You felt, now what? But the point is, I also have people who don't do that. But they'll have a dessert or two desserts in a week. That's They're it. They're disciplined. Yeah. And they have a normal life and they get the same results as the person gone off sugar completely. Now, of course, if someone has a disease, for example, they have to eat for that disease. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's different. But mm. I'm talking about the general population. Mm. My oldest living patient, my longest living patient is now 102 years old. Wow. And I have people in their hundreds, 98, 99, 99. None of them have given up sugar. None Till of them. now. They haven't. Yeah. They just don't overdo it the way you indulge. people do it today. Yeah, yeah. They don't. So let's talk about a simple principle, right? Like mm. now, um, you can take my weight or my basis my height what is the typical consumption that i have to do and okay. why is it so difficult to obtain this information what would you say is a is 
is a formula that, that I can just apply and say, okay, listen, this is how much you can eat. Okay, so there's one way where you use your simple BMI formula yeah. and based on your height and based on your weight, you get to know whether your body type, according to the exercise you do, consistency, consistency is 1,500 cals, 2,000 cals. And based on that, if you want to maintain, if your body type is 1,800 cals, to maintain, you consume 1,800. To lose, you'll go into a calorie deficient. To gain, you'll go over 1,800. Mm. That's the simple benchmark, which also drives a lot of people crazy because they stop enjoying life. <laughs> yeah, They're yeah. constantly counting. I can't measure. Yeah. yeah. The third, the second way, which yeah. is the most natural way. Mm. And when we talk about holistic, I like to train people because even the BMI formulas are not 100% accurate. It doesn't take into account many things. The calories burnt with thinking. The calories burnt when you sleep. So there is like, it's an average but now we all forget the intelligence that we have within us. I don't ever have to think about when I should eat. When I'm hungry, my body tells me to eat. Hmm. If I'm eating slowly and mindfully, my body tells me when to stop. So even if I calculate 1800 calories for you, it can vary every meal. Let's talk about slowly and mindfully. What do you mean yeah. by that? So you basically you eat slowly. You don't look at your phone. You chew your food. You're not watching TV. You're not watching TV. So then you're aware. Because right. when you're starting to feel full, your body's going to tell you, slow down. And if mm. you listen, you've eaten exactly according to what your body requires. Right. So it's, it's really intuition. You know, when you bring up the word holistic today, like everyone's going crazy trying to do all of these things. No one's listening to their body, which is the best indicator to tell you how much you should sleep. Yeah. What time you should sleep. We lead, lead very high intense lives now, right? Like in, in the sense that work is super demanding, people are commuting. Mm -hmm. Working out isn't always, uh, I'm sure everybody can make time, but not a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. Just because you're tired, you're fatigued, or you'd rather just Netflix or like, yeah. you know, hang out. What do you think are a couple of steps that people can do to just integrate a more healthy lifestyle if they're unable to dedicate that one hour mm -hmm. to working out? So see, again, it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. If the person's priority is not their health, Netflix will come first hmm. and the time for the workout will be second or third or just skipped. So the first mindset is if it's important to me, how much can I start off with? Hmm. I know people who do 15 minute workouts, but with consistency and they have fabulous bodies and fabulous health. It's not about an hour. It's really not about an hour. The point is, if you put your mindset towards 15 minutes and you say on Monday, I want to achieve this body goal with 15 minutes slowly over time, because that 15 minutes becomes consistent, it'll become 20 because mm. you feel so good. But when you have to force yourself to do it, it's a resistance, always. You never feel good even after the workout. Yeah. We deal with the busiest people in the world. So the first exercise we, we do with them, every one of them, we sit them down and we do a time management exercise. And even the busiest person in the world finds three to four hours in their day after that exercise. By removing the things that are less important, but they thought was, hey, it's just part of my day. Yeah. So if we break it down, it's like what you said, you know, we have demanding lives today. No, we choose to have demanding lives. Hmm. We choose to. Maybe the job is demanding and you choose to continue with that job, then that's a choice you made. But somewhere in life, you're going to have to sacrifice something else. So you see, I think people's mindsets today have become such that it's a trend. Everyone uses the word, oh, Mumbai lifestyle is busy. Yeah. Mumbai lifestyle is stress. You're and hustling. By, yeah, you're hustling. Yeah. And people start, that becomes your mindset. But you're not really hustling. You're not hustling when you're two hours on social media. Yeah. You're not hustling when you're like watching TV and stuff like that. But people like the feeling because it's cool. Hmm. So a lot of people have to make the change first in their head. You can have, it's always consistency, consistency over intensity. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned something very interesting. You did like a time management exercise with mm -hmm. the busiest people around the world. Um, let's give a little to-do to the people watching in terms of how do they time audit? How do you recommend they can audit their time and create a similar gap for themselves? So it's the same way we look at our budgets. We yeah. get a salary and we budget it. How much money goes towards your rent? How much money goes towards uh, investments? And you do it with your time. Mm. For the first few days, you budget every hour. So you have like a little time diary. Mm. You write every hour. You have 24 hours. So let's say I slept eight hours. Now you have 16 hours. You got to account for those 16 hours. Like what exactly Maybe, am I doing? Yes. Yeah. Out of that five hours is work. Was it really work? Maybe three hours was work, but you were at work, but also one hour was like on social media, one hour was tea breaks, smoke breaks, all of that stuff. You have to be honest with yourself because that's how you'll find the truth in that. You do a personal exercise and be truthful with it. You will find two, three, four hours that you know. You yeah, know, you, you have can, the leeway. You have the yeah. leeway. You can use it for something else. You've yeah. used the word 
mindfulness and mm-hmm. awareness so many times in the conversation it's come up it begins with your mind and i understand because i read a lot about this mm-hmm. how can one in the simplest form be more mindful in their present situation everyone's mindful it's about what you're choosing to be mindful about everyone's mindful about everything going wrong who said what what's not happening you are mindful yeah right now all you need to do is shift your attention to something else that's what mindfulness is it's not like you need to do a 18 hour course online and stuff to study mindfulness mindfulness is right now i am mindful what does that mean i could be thinking about traffic on the way home but i'm here i'm hearing every word that you say and i'm connecting with it i'm mindful so the whole point is the first step to mindfulness is we already have awareness so everyone is capable of being mindful it's just about what they're being mindful about and where they're putting their attention mm. so we have the gift right now it's how we use it right and a lot of these principles eventually trans- translate into something that you're very passionate about which is manifestation and the law of attraction uh, i've studied a lot about it it interests me to no extent but uh, i would love to hear how mm. parallelly you've kind of started also speaking about these things and how have they personally worked for you and mm-hmm. what is the typical advice that you give people who are seeking advice on manifestation so what advice would you give them there's no magic in manifestation it's really there there are three simple rules number one is you got to believe it if you don't believe it you know you're always in that gray area nothing works for you two is crystal clear vision of what you want this is where most people fail you would think people know what they want but try asking someone what is it that you really want and they'll keep wavering and changing or they'll even say i don't know so crystal clear vision is number 1 number 2 you have to act like it's already going to happen okay so i'm going to yeah. stop you here because sometimes the situation you're in kind of you know there's that inner voice a subconscious voice a little voice that tells you no so how do you have that kind of imposter syndrome taken away when you're acting like it is but mm-hmm. there's that knowing voice inside you that's saying that this is your reality. So there are two things in what you said. Number 1, it's not yourself doing that. It's your ego doing that. There's okay. a big difference between the ego and the self. Right. Okay? Your self is your intuition. Hmm. Number 2, it's not about that we have to act like it's happening. It's a knowing, and that's the word that you used. Hmm. It's a knowing that hey, I am going to get this. I can have it. And the third point to complete this which will give you your answer is surrender. That's where people go wrong. Hmm. They don't surrender. So manifestation is not always giving us what we want it's about giving you what may be right for you at the right time in life. Yeah. Like if you ask me if I had what I have today at 25 I think I would have been a failure. Yeah. Because I didn't have maturity and I didn't have patient experience to be what I could be today. So all of yeah. these various uh books podcasts they talk about one concept as well like time is the universe's domain. Mm-hmm. When it happens uh there is a law that mm-hmm. it will show up when you're ready when you have surrendered when you believe when you have faith when you put in the action you put in the work you can't be sitting at home and saying i'm going to be wealthy and yeah. not be doing anything um when you talk about surrendering right like mm-hmm. how do you shut that voice down the voice that tells you you look in the mirror and said oh no you're not that attractive or mm-hmm. you're looking fat today or you're looking too thin or your hips are too wide i don't know whatever mm-hmm. how do you shut that voice out it's belief you can't shut it out it'll keep coming up If you push the voice deeper, it's going to come up stronger. Mm. It has to be belief. You have to do the mind work okay. around it. So let's talk about belief. Yeah. How do I strengthen my belief while okay. I'm so accustomed to believing otherwise? Right. So it happens with faith. Okay. So you need to change it. See, I want to go back to what you said because it's really important a lot of people think manifestation means just think and don't do anything. Yeah. There's a lot of work that you yeah. need to do. So see, one is belief. Why is belief so important? Because the subconscious mind responds to that. So when you keep programming the subconscious mind guess what the belief becomes stronger and all the other voices outside start to drown I love using the example of Lady Gaga for example her story look at her look at her story from where she rose because she believed she absolutely believed that I'm here for my music and my voice I'm not here for my body or my skin or my face and look where she is today only because of her belief Let's talk about further simplification of <clears throat> those who want to apply what everything that you've just spoken about mm-hmm. which is fostering a higher sense of belief a better mm-hmm. sense of belief and then having the faith and then speaking to yourself in a certain way and then acting it and then surrendering what are three steps that one can do today to begin this journey just mm-hmm. simple like start with these three things doing them every day and you'll mm-hmm. see a difference 
Yeah, so start with number one, your own self-exercise. Okay, you know, what are your pain points? Who are you comparing yourself with? The first exercise to do is, who have I been comparing myself with? Hmm. My body, my looks, my money in the bank, who have I been doing it? Because inadequacy and misery comes from comparison. So that's the first step. You have to do that honest exercise with yourself. Number two, revisit the quality of your friend circle. So this important. is so important. Who you hang with, who you follow on social media, who you listen to, okay, because you are becoming a product of that. I have depressed people in Mumbai and Delhi societal circles that don't even want to be in those circles. But just because they need to fit in, they need to be there, party with them, but they're miserable. They're miserable. So today it's about having a few close friends that uplift you, that make you feel good rather than having a hundred friends. Who cares? Who cares yeah. how many friends you have? It's how you feel at the end of the day. So the first step is being honest with yourself. Most See, everyone knows their perfect truth and their lie. Everyone. Mm. So most people are not their true selves. They're trying to be someone else. When you're trying to be somewhere else, someone else, you're already distant from your spirit. Yeah. You cannot manifest. Right. You cannot. So that's the first exercise. Number two, speak about it. Speak about it to your friends, to whoever you want, or journal it. Very interesting, because sometimes you don't take... You like to complicate things, you know, like, oh, it must be a complicated process. But actually, it's very simple, yeah. like the things that you can uh, organize in terms of mindfulness, in terms of attraction, in terms yeah. of just simplicity. Do you meditate? I do sometimes. Right. You know, I, I, when I feel like meditating, but of late, I've, I've learned I could be even listening to some yeah. inspirational scriptures from the Bible or the Quran. I love all religions. And like after 30 minutes, I'm like, wow. Yeah. I was so deeply into it. Yeah, meditation so, can be different. Like even when I'm cooking, I feel like I'm in a meditative. meditative state. Right. Okay, we have another segment. It's called um, Busting Myths. Mm -hmm. So just very common things that people think and what do you think about it? Skipping meals helps with weight loss. No, absolutely not. But you can fast. So yeah. you build your fasting phase and you have a smart eating phase. Okay. But skipping a meal is not necessary. But now sometimes, let's say I overate at lunch. Okay, and I'm not hungry at dinner. Really, really, really not hungry. I may just have like a soup or something yeah. because I want to continue nourishment to my cells. I won't skip the full meal, mm. but I will reduce the quantity. Maybe I'll just have a soup yeah. because I'm not hungry. So that's how it is. But skipping meals can never help with weight loss. You lose water weight, yeah, but not fat. You can out-exercise a bad diet. <clears throat> Impossible. No. Impossible. It's not possible because fat loss is not about burning calories alone. Hmm. Fat loss is about your insulin levels. Yeah. When it's low, you unlock fat cells and you burn energy. So right. you can't you can't outrun or out exercise a bad diet. Hmm. Supplements are a magic solution. <clears throat> Absolutely not. In fact, there's a lot of danger in supplements. Hmm. You can have great supplements. Like I have a deficiency in a patient, I can use a supplement. I have a patient who has a compromised gut and cannot eat food, I will use a supplement. But all these fancy supplements being sold today, you should understand if you don't need it. It can actually create more problems in the human body. So does this include like protein shakes and things protein like that? Protein shake is according to your workout. But right. again, people overdo it on protein shakes, but they're not working out enough. Yeah. It's going to store as fat. It is going to hurt your kidney. You need a high protein <clears throat> diet to build muscle. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely true. But how much is high? Again, depending on how much you work out, hmm. depending on your body weight. Yeah. So technically, if I want to really build big muscle, I can go to 1.2 to 1.4 to even 2 grams of protein per kilo of my body weight, depending on the intensity of my workouts. Workout. Right. Also, depending on my muscle. There's something called muscle quality. <clears throat> Some people's bodies are so efficient at breaking down protein. Some people have a good range of amino acids even in their other meals. So if I'm getting my amino acids from my other meals and I'm getting a protein shake, I don't have too much of a requirement for protein because I'm getting the amino acids. Yeah. But if I'm just doing shakes throughout the day, three, four shakes, and my meals are really bad, I'm not getting the right portion of amino acids. Right. So yes, you need protein to build muscle. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. How much is dependent on your body type? Right. Yeah. Amazing. We're down to the last question. And um, mm -hmm. I think it should be about the holistic approach to life, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've, we've spoken about so many different themes from keeping it simple, from um, really appreciating where you are, like waking up in the morning and deciding to feel a certain way, then yeah. giving your body the time to work out every day, even if it's just a as less as a four yeah. minute workout. Mm -hmm. How can we summarize all of these things into the holistic well-being that mm -hmm. is easy to adapt? into our lifestyle. So I will, I will always look at it. What does the human body need when it comes to nutrition, exercise, sleep, and emotional wellness? Okay, let's look at it that way. Hmm. <clears throat> because you can have a 500 different opinions on nutrition. 
Okay, cells, trillions of cells in the body need vitamins, minerals, macros for energy, protein, fat. It needs that. According to your body type, nature first, good quality, quantity. That's your nutrition. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be smart. Mm. Number one. Number two, exercise. The body, what does the body need? What does it need? Move it me. needs endurance. Mm. It needs stamina. It needs flexibility, mobility, VO2 max, <clears throat> and strength. So now, is yoga the only exercise for me? Yes, if my asanas can meet all of these five things, and I have a walk in the evening or a brisk run, I'm getting everything I need. Now, I need stamina. I need endurance when I'm 60, 70, 80, 90 years old. I need it for every aspect of my life. So now my week should look like there should be cardio, there should be strength, there should be mobility, flexibility, and VO2 max. So now you look and say, oh, I don't have any of these. I'm only lifting weights. Or oh, maybe I should start doing a run. Or maybe I should swim. And you slowly start building it. Oh, I only pick up weights. Let me do a little mobility before. Stretching after. And you make your workout holistic. Because it's not about what we want. It's, it's about what the body wants. needs every single day. Yeah. So that's how it is. You know, I think holistic is making use of whatever nature's given us to get better, to feel better. So beyond diet, what are the medicines that are available? Sunlight, sunshine, spending time in nature, clean water social connections, learning how to be calm, learning how to be happy with what we have, aspire for more. But learning to be happy with what we have is fulfillment. What a beautiful, beautiful health drug that is. Because when you feel fulfilled, everything in your body changes. Yeah. You're in harmony. So if you ask me today, holistic wellness, everything starts in the mind first. We can start being holistic from right now based on the choices that we make on what the human body requires. So holistic is everything around us that keeps us in harmony. Whatever it is, someone may say homeopathy doesn't work, but someone else it does. Do it if it works for you. Mm. But the point is making those choices from the vast amount of natural medicines that we have. And take your medicines if you're prescribed. But if you move the holistic way, eventually your doctor will stop your medications because you yeah. start to heal from within, address the root cause of the problem. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, I think that there was so much to understand just on keeping it simple and keeping it organic to whatever we have. So thank you. I got all of my questions answered. Uh, it was lovely chatting with you, Luke. Thank, thank you, you for thank doing you. this. It's thank been a you. pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you for being the best community and we'll see you in the next one.